Well, hello, welcome, and thank you very much for joining this ABB press conference in which we're going to discuss how motorsport, and specifically ABB Formula E, can act as a platform to drive social progress. And joining us here today at the Monaco e -Prix, we have a fantastic panel who I'll introduce to you now. So firstly, we have uh, Theodor Svejimark, who's ABB's Chief Communications and Sustainability Officer. Then Susie Wolf, who's Team Principal of Rocket Venturi Racing. Michelle Mouton, who is the FIA's President of the Women in Motorsport Commission. Jamie Regal, CEO of Formula E, and Dilbag Gill, who is CEO and Team Principal of Mahindra Racing. Thank you all very much for joining us. Just before we start, there's a very quick point of order because we have a, a, a virtual uh, background to this. So for anybody joining online, if you'd like to ask a question to the panel, please submit your question by the pop-up box on your screen. Great. So I'd like to kick off by asking each of you to share your own perspectives on the topic of sustainability, diversity, and inclusion in motorsport. And we'll start with you, Theo. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Anthony. And thank you to all of you for joining us here today. Also to uh, my fellow pe uh, panelists here. Um, as I, um, Anthony said, I'm from ABB. I'm Chief Communications and Sustainability Officer. And would just like to start off by saying that at ABB, sustainability is really embedded in everything that we do. Uh, we recently launched a new, uh, very ambitious 2030 sustainability agenda, which includes uh, very ambitious targets on, on trying to help uh, reduce emissions, so fight climate change in the world. We like to call enable a low carbon society but also help driving the implementation of sustainable business uh, practices across our whole value chain, which means working very closely with our customers and suppliers um, to tackle also the life cycle of all of our products and solutions. Um, at ABB, we also think and know that culture, uh, culture of a diversity, inclusion and equal opportunity really makes us stronger as a company and as a team. Uh, which is why, in addition to helping enable a low-carbon society and help preserve the world's resources, we like to talk about driving and promoting encouraging social progress. And part of that, uh, encouraging women in STEM fields and other traditionally dominated male environments is a key element for us of driving social progress to create safe, fair and inclusive working environments for everyone. Motorsport um, is a high-profile platform for us to help do this, and it brings naturally together the two elements highlighting an existing groundbreaking impact of technology. Again, ABB is a technology company, and engineering can have also in terms of promoting social progress. Um, and this sector and uh, our involvement with the Formula E through the ABB uh, FIA World uh, Championship, Formula E World Championship, we're working hard uh, also together with them on driving their positioning around positively charged messaging. And we really see it, Formula E as the perfect platform for us to take the next step in driving also social mobility. In addition, as I said, to help enable a more low carbon society, as well as speaking about sustainability more broadly. Um, we already pro today provide some uh, technology into the championship. We have, for example, a bespoke UPS, uninterruptible power supply solution, helping here to provide backup power for the broadcasting center and some other things. And as of the Gen 3 season nine, we will also be providing as the global leader in EV charging, the charging technology uh, for the Gen 3 uh, cars. Additionally, ABB also has a partnership with Porsche Formula E team. Sorry for that, for the two colleagues here, um, where we really, which we do to really help drive and create further excitement around e-mobility. So that's it from my side. Thank you, Theo, for that overview. Now, Susie, I'd like to come to you on this one, because obviously this topic has been a topic that's very close to your heart for a number of years. So the simple question is, why is it important to encourage women into motorsport? You're absolutely right. It's something that I'm very passionate about. And long, alongside Michelle, um, we try to call to action. It's easy in this day and age to hashtag, it's easy to talk about solutions, but it's the people that are actually making change that are helping the progress. And when I joined the Formula E platform and uh, approached Formula E with the idea of possibly getting involved with the FIA girls on track, there was immediate interest. And, and now to have, see the relationship develop in such a way is something 
that makes me very, very proud. Obviously, on this platform, we're racing for a better future. And for me, diversity is a big part of that. Motorsport has always been seen as very male dominated. And I think it's about inspiring the next generation. It's about creating opportunity. And this new partnership will just go from, from strength to strength. And in the end, it's only by making these changes that hopefully we'll see progress on the longer term. And I think what Michelle has managed to achieve within the FIA through the Women in Motorsport Commission can only be applauded. It's gaining momentum. Uh, it's not always easy, uh, but with the force of Michelle, she gets things done. And that's something which I'm hugely inspired by. Thank you, Susie. Uh, I'll come to you now, Michelle. Uh, you're an icon of motorsport, if you don't mind me saying. Um, but could you perhaps tell, tell us a bit about your work with the FA Women in Motorsport Commission and, and its aims as well? Yeah, so the FIA Women in Motorsport Co Commission was created at the end of 2009 under the presidency of uh, Jean Todd. Uh, I am proud. I have been uh, its president since uh, the early days and uh, we have learned a lot over the years. Uh, while our core co mission to promote gender equality, diversity and inclusion in the sports has remained the same, knowledge has allowed us to refine our activities and realize our ambition to encourage greater female participation. A key element in growing participation has been the committed engagement of the FIA as a um, network of national sporting authorities. Uh, from the early, earliest days, the ASN have been one of our greatest uh, assets and the support has enabled us to reach out at truly global scale. So today we are working with those ASN women in motorsport representative over more than 75 countries. And uh, it's a true example of a think local, act global approach. And uh, really, we, 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 are, we like to work with them. And uh, this represents for us a very re real progress, as together we are stronger. And uh, along so many other organizations now supporting women in motorsport and diversity with our, within the, the workplace, we have come to a long way over 11 years, not simply as a commission, but as part of the global movement to increase gender equality. Across uh, every industry and sport and profession, we have seen positive change, but not only with time and continued effort, we will the scale become more balanced. Our work at the grassroots level aims to tackle some of this uh, imbalance, and we are determined to inspire girls at a young age to demonstrate that our sport is equally open to all of them, because increasing the numbers at the base of the sport is really crucial. Uh, behind the high profile competition side, there is a great industry in which real and exciting career opportunity exists. Being aligned with partners who share our vision is a great endorsement for what we are doing and takes our project for a higher level. Our Women in Motorsport team is committed to providing opportunities, increasing awareness and supporting women in all, of all age as they try to realize goals and dreams. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, true inspiration. Um, Jamie, as CEO of Formula E, you, you've made this subject area one of the central topics around the championships narrative. So could you tell us why it's important to you? Well, Formula E is, is unique in sport in the sense that it was started with a, with a core purpose around addressing climate change, right? I mean, there are very few sports that have been started with a purpose beyond the actual sporting endeavor itself. And when I looked at 2020, and I think 2020 was a, was a watershed year in society uh, for, for all sorts of reasons. And as we sat there with COVID, with racial protests around the world, um, we asked ourselves a pretty serious question, which is, are we okay being a car race to advance electric mobility, which is, which is a noble activity in its own right, or actually can we define ourselves in, in, in a bit of a broader way? And you know, we looked at it and, and putting aside the branding initiatives that came from that, right, this, this positively charged hashtag, if you will, um, what we said was, look, we're really about a better future for the planet, right? We're a better future for humanity. And, that's quite a grand thing to say, but when you define yourself through that prism, suddenly you can express yourself and play in much 
broader areas of importance in society. And we look really closely at diversity and inclusion as, as being you know, an area where we had a responsibility, right? Not just, not just the ability to play, but a responsibility to play. And that was something that, that, that changed internally. And I think what's really important is we had to be super intentional about it, right? It's not enough, as Susie said, simply to talk about it. You have to start taking clear actions to demonstrate that change. And that's something that we believe we're at the beginning of that journey. You know, we are fundamentally a pretty small company, right? And we have high media visibility because we're a sport. But what we need to do is work with partners to be able to amplify those activities and amplify those messages. So, you know, as I sit here with, with Susie and, and Michelle, obviously we have pretty iconic um, manifestations or representations of the potential of, of women in motorsport. And I think we have to take a, a broad perspective in terms of how we can create a platform that will allow young women to get exposure to the sport in a much broader way um, through, of course, ultimately desiring people to end up perhaps in the, in the cockpit, but what is the sport and how is it defined in a more broad way? There's the engineering pieces, the media pieces, health and safety, science, all that. How do we create those pathways? And I remember when I went to um, the Santiago Epri and I walked around with my friends from the FIA we saw the girls on track program and I said immediately, wow, this is, this is amazing, this exists. What a, what a really cool initiative. And seeing the young girls with their mothers or fathers, brothers and sisters, the families, the way that was being brought together was really inspiring. And you know, we immediately said, hey, we have to, uh, we have to get behind this in a, in a really serious way. So, so we're really excited to, uh, to be here continuing that initiative. That's great, thank you, Jamie. And Dilbert, come to you now. Um, could you explain to us how Mahindra Racing sees motorsport as a way to improve diversity and inclusion? Thank you, Anthony, for the question. I appreciate that. See, I think Mahindra Racing draws inspiration from Mahindra Group in terms of our social responsibility, and we believe that doing good goes beyond philanthropy and CSR. For us, it's more than just random acts of kindness. Doing good is a purpose, an attitude, and a way of life a guide for conducting business, and in the end, conducting ourselves. Uh, see, from us, practically, we've taken a couple of initiatives, and I might just like to highlight two out here. One is what we call Project Nani Kali in India, which is something which we started 25 years ago, and we are really proud that we have taken underprivileged girls through 10 years of education, and we have taken 450,000 of them through 10 years of education. And the basic purpose out here was that we give them academic support, annual school supply stuff, but ultimately let them to go to school with dignity. And that's been something which has been really important. The second initiative which I'd like to highlight is that uh, Mahindra in India supports the Baha SAE, Baha series. And we have 200 teams which participate with around 20 to 25 engineers in each of those teams. It's one of the biggest Baha events around the world. And I'm really proud the last year the winning team was an all women's team. So there is talent. There are girls on track in India, and I think it's something which we can see going forward. So these are just some of the initiatives which we like to, which we take out there. And at the end of the day, I think just to align back with sustainability and responsibility makes us good citizens in Formula E. That's great, Dilbak. Thank you very much. Now, I have a couple of questions uh, before we move to questions from the floor. Um, but we'll start with you, Theo. Um, what is ABB's next step in using motorsport and ABB Formula E to help improve diversity and inclusion? Yeah, well, maybe some of you have already seen also the press releases that have gone out today, and I think it's part of the reason why we have also been able to assemble, assemble such a distinguished crowd, uh, crowd here today. But we're really very pleased and, and honored and proud to, uh, to announce today that we will uh, become the official global partner of the Girls on Track uh, Formula E project. So this is very concretely a uh, next step that we are taking. We are super excited. I can't explain to you internally or here more when we announced this also earlier in the week internally to our global executive team, the top 200 leaders. There was a, such an uh, enthusiasm and uh, amount of excitement uh, internally. As I mentioned before, as part of our 2030 uh, sustainability agenda, promoting social progress and diversity and inclusion is super crucial for us. We come from a long background of uh, heavy technology um, and we have also set ourselves very ambitious targets on that. But we really look forward to working both with Formula E, the teams, the FIA of course, uh, to drive this forward and help create excitement uh, for women both around the motorsport itself but around technology and STEM 
uh, fields uh, for uh, for such as also coming working and creating excitement in, in the environment that we operate. So um, we really want to do this to empower, empower also young women to have the you know the, the the ambition to do great, like the two ladies we have here next to us have done, um, and that of course complements our existing engagement with Formula E uh, perfectly. And uh, to what Michelle said, it stuck on my mind here before you said think global and act local. This is really how we work in ABB. We're a global company. company. We're active in over 100 countries. And uh, again, to the 2030 agenda, we do things with global strategic mindset and we implement this locally around the world. And uh, ABB Formula E and uh, the Girls on Track program, we really see and we want to help drive that on a global but local basis uh, together with them. And one example, so in our field, uh, women are historically pretty underrepresented in senior management in big technological companies. So we have also set ourselves a very ambitious target of having 25% uh, of the senior management of the company on all levels, women by 2030. So we see this also as an opportunity to really help drive excitement for, uh, for women in our field to already start studying technological subjects and get closer to technology and, of course, motorsport and racing in general. So. Thank you, Theo. Now, the next one I'm going to direct to Susie, Jamie and Michelle, and I'll come to you one by one. Um, could you explain more about what the Girls on Track Formula E project will involve? And I'll start with you, Susie, on that one. Well, I think like what Jamie touched upon, we started with uh, events at the racetrack, and the events are something which are quite special because most of the time the young girls that attend have never been to a racetrack before and they never had the experience of driving a car, doing a STEM activity, uh, driving a simulator. And really a big part of Girls on Track is simply not looking for the next talent on track, as in a female racing driver. It's simply opening up the whole sport because if you take the example of here in Monaco, we have 24 drivers on the grid, but I mean a rough guess, Jamie, 4,000 people involved in putting the event on. Um, and if you look at this room now, the amount of women here who have roles that are not involved in racing, but are part of the sport. And it's not just about finding the next female racing driver. It's about opening up the whole sport and inspiring the next generation. It's about creating opportunity. And I think by getting girls to a racetrack and opening up the world of Formula E to them, not only are they obviously being introduced to electric cars and the, the possibility of the future in the automotive industry, but they're seeing motorsport up close and they're being inspired. And we're well aware not every little girl will go away wanting to work in motorsport, but she will have had her eyes open. The unconscious bias of thinking that racetracks are only really for boys will hopefully have been um, changed and, and it will empower her to believe that actually she's maybe capable of looking at the world slightly differently than what society tells tells her to. So I think from that perspective, it's it's hugely um, beneficial, and I think it's a way to make sure that we are trying to inspire the next generation. And, and the Formula E platform as a whole is making sure that in the long term it can become more diverse on and off the track. Thank you, Susie. J Jamie, is there anything you'd like to add on that? Uh, what the Girls on Track Formula E project will involve? Well, I think Susie summarized the, the, the broad initiatives, but for me, there's, there's an, if you will, an inspirational element, right, which is exposing young girls to the potential within motorsport or perhaps sport more broadly. Then there's really the practical curriculum. I mean, I actually went through the curriculum uh, a year ago and, and did a half day. And what you realize is, to Susie's point, it's not, yes, there's a moment in a go-kart track, but actually the entire program includes uh, elements around health and safety and, and how that ties in with you know potentially becoming a, a medical doctor tied to tied to sport um, there's elements around drunk driving and the impairment issue there's a whole host of initiatives that are educative educative if that makes sense and the question for us is then how do you how do you scale that right because we have a limited number of events over the year um, typically about 12 territories that we touch we're going to try to do more um, going forward, and, and obviously with ABB support, you know that's that's instrumental uh, in terms of resources, in terms of scaling the program, and then this year with COVID, as is the case in a lot of our lives, we've we've learned how to do things virtually, so we can get scale through digital platforms as well. 
so we're not just limited to what's happening you know, in, on the tracks at the events themselves. Obviously, that live experience is really special, and we want to commit to that. But we're going to look at doing some digital initiatives as well to, uh, to enhance the exposure. Great. Thank you, Jamie. And Michelle, is, is there anything you'd like to add about what the Girls on Track Formula E project will involve? Uh, we, we have already organized uh, many uh, Girls on Track events uh, during Formula E event and uh, with great success. And uh, it's really a come and try opportunity for young girls and uh, we want to inspire the youngster and uh, with the uh, first fun but also educational activity to showcase subject orientated uh, towards our industry. And uh, we propose a little bit of karting uh, to youngster to experience the, the thrill of the sport and the competition. Uh, the more educational part of the event is based on the STEM activities, how the sciences, te te technology, engineering, and mathematics subject uh, can lead uh, to an exciting career in many different areas of the sport. This is really the, the, the we have also media, fitness, and nutrition uh, workshop also to showcase another important side of, of, of the sport. And um, the program also tried to highlight areas of social responsibility such as the road safety and the danger linked to the alcohol and drugs, for example. Uh, what is important is that making this engagement at a young age, really, uh, it's really a, a, a very important for us because from a point of view of career, of opportunities, but also for social awareness, it's really very important to us. Thank you, Michelle. Unfortunately, we just have to pause here. Susie, uh, you've got a race team to run and um, I'm I believe you have to part. <laughs> it's very, the one week of the year simple. that I'm really in demand, the Monaco evening. Thank you, Susie. <laughs> Thank you so much, Susie. Great, but we'll, uh, we'll move on. So the next question I'll direct towards Theo first, then uh, Jamie and Michelle, if that's OK. Uh, what roles and responsibilities do we have within motorsport to help improve diversity, equality and inclusion? Well, first of all, motorsport has been driving progress uh, for a very long time. It's uh, really at the kind of spear of, of, of driving innovation for a long time. So we really see, we want motorsport to become the same also in this subject. And we think that the Girls on Track uh, Formula E project can really help to drive also innovation and, and progress in, in the area of diversity and inclusion. So of course, again, to drive more and inspire more women to get involved in the sport and the areas around the sport itself, but also to help drive progress across, like motorsport has done in the past, across value chains or into other areas of, of society in previously male-dominated uh, industries as automotive or technology companies like ourselves and really drive and, and encourage women to also study and get more involved in STEM subjects uh, overall. Thank you, Theo. Jamie, uh, same question. What roles and responsibilities do we have within motorsport to help improve diversity, equality and inclusion? Well, look, I, let me answer a slightly different question, right? I mean, I, we're trying to be the best we can be. It's not about a responsibility or an obligation. It's what enables success. Right. We need diverse organizations, whether that's race teams or industrial companies like ABB or a sports property. You know, if, if we're limiting the talent pool by you know, following our own unconscious biases and hiring people who are more like us, fundamentally you're going limit, to limit your performance, limit your success. And I have a very strong view on that. And we need to be really intentional about it in terms of how we hire, how we identify talent, um, and how we... Um, promote, and I don't mean necessarily through the organization, but, but provide opportunities for people uh, within the organization to be successful. And, and that's what, as the CEO of the company, my responsibility is to drive performance, and, and that's what enables it. I think what is special about sport and motorsport is it's a source of inspiration in a way that you know, perhaps other businesses are not naturally, because we have this, whatever you want to call it, a platform, a marketing platform, or a media exposure, and people look to it for high performance inspiration. They see these wonderful exploits of you know, the drivers. In the case of motorsport, it's that interplay between the drivers and the engineers. And I think that's probably underappreciated, which is all the work that goes into it. Yes, there's someone in the cockpit who ultimately gets to lift, lift the trophy at the end of the race. But what led to that, those spirits of teamwork, um, 
the way you bring a group of people together toward a common goal, all of those things, that's where sport really has a special uh, platform and therefore a responsibility to be able to showcase that the best teams tend to be the ones that are most diverse because you're bringing the best quality and the best talent together. Thanks, Jamie. And Michelle, the same, same question. What roles and responsibilities do we have within motorsport to improve diversity and equality? Yeah, we, I think we all have a responsibility to strive uh, for equal opportunity within uh, the sport and our society. And uh, uh, the, the FIA Women in Motorsport Commission is uh, really dedicated to striving this cause since a uh, long time. Uh, it is also a part of the FIA's commitment to the Olympic uh, Charter and uh, also to the FIA purpose-driven uh, uh, movement. So we have also ambassadors for her across many areas in the industry and uh, they support uh, the successful work of uh, women and, uh, uh, and they act like a role model and uh, you know, they are inspirational for the next generation and Suzy is uh, one of our uh, fit finest uh, ambassador for that. And uh, I'd like to actually get a team perspective on, on this topic, you know, how uh, roles and responsibilities within the team can help improve diversity, equality and inclusion. Well, I think from, from our perspective is like we're trying to go to the grassroots level as an organization, as a corporate. And I just mentioned earlier in terms of like the Baha, which we think is a real nice level to start at because it's, it's at the college level and people are getting exposed to it. And these are uh, mixed uh, teams in terms of women and men. And I said that we've grown the Baha program in India to 200 teams of around 20 to 25. So there are around 4,000 students out there actively challenging. And the last year we had the e-Baha with 50 teams and it was one by an all women team. So it was really interesting. And that they start interacting a lot with the Formula E team just to learn a little bit from us, our engineers. And at the end of the day, they do go for international competition and I think they have been pretty successful. So for our, our purposes, that we try to go at the level of STEM and, and below that, we're trying to do what we have, the Nani Kali project, as I said, uh, we're giving underprivileged girls education, and it's like 10 years of education. It's just not one or two, it's 10 years, and there's 450,000 uh, children who have gone through that whole program. So I think there is, you would start seeing some of the output of our investments over the last 15, 20 years starting to come out in the next few years. That's great, dear Buck. thank you. Now, uh, we have some media with us, so we're gonna take a, a question or two from the floor before we carry on. Hi, uh, yeah, question for uh, Theodore actually. Gen 3 is imminent, it's going to start next year. You're going to supply the infrastructure for the fast charging. Do you see that as a, a sort of catalyst for getting more female engineers involved in, in racing and Formula E? Um, Alessandra Siliberti is the sort of director of the project from an FIA perspective. It seems like a, a very opportune time to get more, more women involved. Yeah, well, of course, uh, we are as ABB not the ones who define finally the, the Gen 3 race product and fully set up. But of course, we see it as uh, from our perspective as a great, uh, great opportunity to bring in even more technology and excitement around the whole platform as we are the world leader in charging. We definitely have a lot of females involved in our whole value chain developing this technology. And some of the technology that will be implemented also in the in the charging systems for Gen 3 will actually be commercialized and used throughout our global operations for as the world leader. Today we have more than 400,000 fast chargers already installed and sold worldwide. So I flip it around a little bit and see uh, it will definitely help us create excitement even further to drive internally within the company and wider in society uh, the engagement and excitement for females in our industry. Maybe Jamie is better to answer the, around the race product itself and maybe on track or so, but uh, definitely we hope that this will be the case as well. I think it will bring even more excitement to the sport uh, when we go forward. One more. Um, a question maybe for Jamie, I think. Um, uh, Formula E is a global sport. ABB is obviously a global company in terms of making this initiative something that, that really reaches out globally and particularly to places that perhaps there isn't a huge amount of representation in most sport already. Um, like, could you talk a bit about that, I guess? Sure, I mean, the, 
you know, as, as Michelle said earlier, I mean, the, the FIA Girls on Track program has been running for, for quite some time, and, you know, the FIA has had strong leadership in, in that regard, and as the, the global governing body, it's a, it's a global initiative, right? I mean, I think as, when I, as we look at it, you know, from a, from a Formula E perspective, we're talking about gender opportunities, for example, in, in the Western world, right, where the standards or relative progress along that line is quite different than in you know many of the other markets we race in and so it's very important for us to be able to bring the events and the initiatives you know into into some other markets without naming like specific countries and giving my personal views on um, where female empowerment and opportunity sits in different territories it's very clear that as we look at the platform for for girls on track that we're going to be bringing it into all of the uh, the key race markets that we operate in not just not just the Western ones, for sure. Um, that, that's a really big initiative for us. Okay. Um, by the miracle of technology, we have some online questions now from our online participants. So this one is from Toby Bloom from eformal.de, who asks, uh, and this is a general question, so any of you could pick it up. Do you think a women's quota of sorts, similar to that which large companies use or which Extreme E has could improve the visibility of female drivers in ABB Formula E. Who would like to take that one? Just to make sure I understood the question, is, is the question like if we, if we had a mandatory quota or? Yeah, it's a quota question. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, there's a, uh, and I'll, I'll maybe take a crack at this and maybe Michelle is probably uh, a good person to give a different perspective. Um, from a Formula E perspective, right, we have had a female driver in, in season one, right? So I think there's an argument to be made that, you know, motorsport is uh, equal in terms of the uh, conceptual opportunity to be able to participate for, for female drivers. That being said, I think I tend to be a little evidence-based. And so when you look across motorsport and you see that there are very few, you have to ask yourself, well, are we doing enough to create pathways, to create opportunities? and to be able to promote those opportunities for, for talented women. And I think there's clearly a deficit there. Obviously, with Extreme E, um, the way that that product was set up intentionally at, from the outset was to create an equal opportunity uh, within the cockpit, so to speak. Um, for Formula E, we're defining it more broadly. But there's no doubt, as I look at our roadmap, when you look at global sporting organizations, global sporting properties, there are very few today perhaps the NFL in the US that doesn't have some plan around a development of a program for females in the sport. And so the Girls on Track initiative with the FIA and with ABB is, as we've been discussing, a, a broad-based initiative around bringing more young women into uh, the exposure of, of the potential of motorsport. I think there's another gap that we have in terms of getting women opportunity within the race cars as well. And I think Sam asked the question about the engineering opportunities. You know, it's, it's an entire system, but we have a responsibility to, to look at that. And we will. I'm not saying too much more. Would anybody else like to have a crack at that one? A quota question? Or should we move on? Okay, we'll move on. Uh, the next question is from Peter Leung, who asks, uh, this one was actually directed at Michelle and Susie, but we'll just direct this one to Michelle. We often emphasize the importance of role models, particularly for young girls, to look to for inspiration and guidance. Who were your role models when you were pursuing your racing career? I was the only one, so <laughs> there was not so many <laughs> uh, role models for me. Uh, even men, I mean, w when you try, you know, in, you, you try yourself and... Uh, and then you go on and you, you try to progress. And uh, I, I have to say, I didn't have any role model. OK, thank you. I think we have one or two more. Just bear with me. This one is from uh, Edgardo Berg uh, from Cars a la Carta. Also asks to Michelle, do you think that the goal of equality is being reached among drivers? Um, not yet, for sure, because we are working <laughs> on that. So, not, not for sure, not yet. But um, I mean, uh, we, we can see a very positive change, and it's improving a lot. We have now uh, girls in nearly all the discipline, and it's uh, 
it's improving. But as I always explain, you know, the base of our pyramid is so small compared to the men that, of course, to have more girls on the top, we need to increase. This why this Girls on Track initiative is so important. It's, for me, fundamental. You know, we, we don't have any other solution. We have to increase the base to be able to have at the top. So this is, for me, the answer. But of course, we have to work against equality. Great. Thank you. We have, uh, we have another one. Uh, also from Peter Leung, who asks Jamie, where do you believe the heart of Formula E's value lies? And as CEO, how can you better deliver value to teams and stakeholders going forward? Well, Formula E exists to advance EVs, right? As we touched on earlier. As we're defining ourselves now, it's more through this lens of human progress, right? And that's a very grandiose thing to say. But if you, if you distill it down, what does it mean? It means, about, it, it means progressing an opportunity within sport and as you define the sport through the engineering and all the elements around, right? So we believe that is a core principle for Formula E. It's not necessarily why, why we exist, but it is a pillar of what we're trying to achieve. Um, in terms of how we serve our stakeholders, Right? I mean, a lot of the conversations that are happening right now as we look to Gen 3 is how can we use um, some technical and technological innovations around the car and around the charging to create a better sport? And that's really the interesting debate we're having with our team principals, with our sponsors, with our manufacturers now to how to make the sport as impactful as possible for all three of those stakeholders. And that's quite unique, again, within sport. You know, the, the folks around football, for example, to use the topical element with Super League recently, right? That was about um, splitting up the pie in a different way, right? What we're talking about here is trying to figure out how do we grow the pie fundamentally for, for electric motorsport and for electric mobility. And that's a really much more exciting challenge. So more to come on that as we, uh, as we develop the product set for Gen 3. OK, thank you, Jamie. Um, I think that's pretty much the end of the questions for today, unless there's anything else from the floor before I wrap up. So I think all that remains is to thank you all very much for joining us. Thank you all for your time and your lucid answers and wish you all the very best for a successful weekend here in Monaco. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.